Okay, so after that awesome run of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, we are con going on with The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. So let's give it up for Cruel. Let's go, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to uh, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Um, I'm going to go into whatever the hell is going on here in, uh, or once we've actually started. But uh, I will uh, give Tech a little bit of time to uh, get ready. And uh, we'll just go for a countdown, get, jump right into the game, because there will be plenty of time to, uh, to discuss the house and what's. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one, go. So, so welcome again. Uh, this is the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Uh, I'm going to be running a somewhat older route, because I actually learned this game like two and a half years ago. and. You know, kind of quit after that. But the first trick is coming up right here. We're going to jump out of the out of the window here onto a ledge that's basically impossible to see. Get onto the wall, and uh, well, we're going to skip all of hell and escape right there. So uh, yeah, that's that's immediately the first trick in the game. Uh, into the keep. Uh, this is also the first moment already where you're going to see a route difference between the Looks current like route well. and the. Uh, should keep. Uh, the route that I'll be using. There will be a, in the current route, there is a safe warp of sorts because of which you can skip a little bit more than I'll be skipping. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not actually able to do that, so I'd rather not. However, it does have the benefit of me being able to show off this little trick right here. We'll just jump right through the wall because this game is rather broken. So that said, I'm gonna. Uh, you may have seen, like, as if the game was pausing for a little bit there. I actually quick saved and immediately quick loaded. Uh, and by using my controls in a very specific way there, I was able to get into an infinite sprint glitch here. So basically, I'm sprinting, but my stamina isn't reducing, which is quite helpful, actually, if you want to uh, want to speedrun this thing. Just jump over the torch there. And we're just going to calmly walk out of this place. Most of the enemies have disappeared due to uh, me glipping through the wall earlier. So I don't have to worry much about enemies, and I can just keep on running. We get this, uh, this bridge to lower, and off we go. Now, uh, I quickly should explain a few things. First and foremost, I'm currently playing as an orc. We actually set up the, the class or the, the race before we start. The orc has the highest attack and the second highest movement speed, so it's a really useful class for speedrunning. Uh, the other class usually used is the high elf for having the highest uh, running speed. However, high elf being slightly more risky and dealing less damage can be quite dangerous during the Alduin fights. Hence me picking orc over, uh, over high elf on account of this. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the entire escape of Helgen. Uh, I picked up a helmet on the way. We're going to use that to get basically infinite money very soon. And I'm just going to head north here. Just going to enjoy the landscape a little bit. I can't actually use my left and right key, so I fully have to control uh, by just holding forward and using my mouse. Uh, because of the infinite sprint glitch that I use, it's impossible for me to move towards the sides. That's also... The, the, that's kind of the one uh, bonus of it. It also makes me able to immediately tell whether I'm in infinite sprint or not. So we're just going to scale down a mountain here. We don't really care. We just got to watch out that we don't actually die here, because dying is rather bad. Yeah, that's about it. And we're going to make our way to uh, to the next town, where we're going to... Uh, well, we're going to set a war point, and we're going to get a lot of money, because money is pretty useful. Uh, now, I only have a helmet to sell, and helmets don't really sell for a lot of money. So, uh, instead of selling the helmet, I'm going to actually sell the helmet, and then I'm going to sell basically all of his inventory to himself by using a vendor glitch. So, I'm going to talk to this guy. Uh, that's not really what I wanted. I want to see what he's got for sale. I'm going to go into my equipment. And now he's, uh, he's very poor right now. I sold his, his own armor. I sold back to him. And now I've got like 500 gold, which is more than enough for the entire remainder of the game. So after the first uh, major hold of the of the game, to the city of Whiterun, where, uh, well, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna be a little bit mean. I'm gonna get a bounty for a little bit. It's kind of not really what the game would like you to do, but hey, we we don't care about the rules here. So uh, off we go. 
I'm aiming for the farm up ahead because there's a guard around that and I want him to arrest me. So I'm just going to run towards the farm here. Basically, this game is just a giant running simulator where we're going to run from place to place, uh, get a few items along the way, and we're not really going to fight for a good while. I took some damage there, but that's fine. So here is the farm. I do actually want to set up a warp point to this farm. And there's the guard that I mentioned. So we're, uh, we're going to punch him. And uh, okay, please arrest me, dude. Thank you. I'm going to pay off my bounty. And he's going to therefore warp me into, uh, into the, the keep, which sets a warp point at Dragon's Reach, which I'll need later on. So time to go back to the farm. Because uh, it's off to the next major hole. We're going to go to uh, to Solitude, the capital of Skyrim. And I set up my sprint glitch real quick. We're going to talk to this dude. He's, uh, he's a nice dude. Uh, and I want to go to Solitude. Uh, I'm going to quickly set a war point at the Sables, because I will need to use the Sables again later. And off to Solitude. Now, there's a few other differences that I haven't really mentioned yet. Uh, first of all, I'm actually running on English, which is not the fastest language. Uh, the fastest language is actually Spanish. But I figured for the sake of an event like this, it'd be nicer to run in English. So uh, it's, it, it loses me about eight seconds over the course of the run to run in English over, uh, over Spanish. Now, if you've ever played Skyrim, you might know this, uh, this embassy that you have to go through for the main quest line at some point. Pick up a few items. Learn about, you know, the entire deal with dragons, even though, well, we haven't really seen a dragon yet outside of the first one. Uh, which is, by the way, a dragon we're never... Act like, the second dragon that you're supposed to see is one that we'll never actually get to see. We're just going to skip that altogether. And uh, I'm just going to make my way to the embassy here. Just, uh, just casually walking through the forest, because we can. Now, you're supposed to kind of sneak in there. You're going to get, like... Uh, in there on account of like some some big business party that's going on there but we don't care uh i've got a much much cooler way to get in here so this is the embassy the thalmor embassy and i'm gonna go towards the back because uh well they've got some cool walls around here and you're gonna see another instance of how broken this game is so i'm gonna get out of sprint glitch here by just sprinting for a little bit I'm gonna get myself into position uh, I picked up a bucket earlier, which I'm going to drop here. I'm going to pick that up. Quick save, quick load. And, uh, well, we're going to just... Uh, oh, well, that's a, that can happen sometimes. That's fine. Okay, can I please get in? I'm supposed to actually... Okay, please, game. Game. This is not a hard trick. There we go. Okay, and there, now we're in the embassy. Back into sprint glitch. Got it first try. Now the cool thing is, because we got in here by clipping through the wall, most of the enemies just aren't here. I'm gonna just get everything in there, and I'm gonna just uh, run out of here. So uh, we're off next. Uh, we've seen two of the major holds, or at least what's what's actually important about it. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the stables, and we're gonna take a ride to Riften. The rift tends to be pretty cool this time of year, so uh, how about we do that? Need a ride? Where do you want to go? So we, we want to go to the rift here, and uh, off we go. Never been to Riften. Be sure to visit the Black Briar Meadery. Your mugs are dads, and you'll forget all. So once again, we're uh, gonna try to get arrested here. Uh, this time, I don't want to punch a guard, because that's kind of mean. So I'm going to punch this horse. And, uh, well, he's going to arrest me. So I'll pay off my bounty, and we'll get into uh, into the rift itself. And this is where we find we want to find Esbern. Because we want to set up for the next couple of, uh, couple of story triggers. Basically, we're going to skip just about everything, except for all of the stuff needed for the main quest line. So this is... We're just going to get through the main quest line. There are speedruns for the other stories but you know uh this this will work just fine so i'm gonna use another trick here and i didn't get it first try this is actually a pretty hard one this is a pretty tight jump come on you've got a couple of frames to jump there and if you jump there because we're in the sprint glitch you can actually make it across that bridge without actually having to get it down the regular way so we'll just do that instead 
That basically skips all of that part, and we can just move on to the ragged flag and right uh, right away. Uh, I'm gonna pick uh, pick up the bucket. People are kind of upset about me for stealing a bucket, but we're just gonna jump down here. Now there is a glitch here through which I can uh, basically skip the entire part there again on the way back. Uh, however, it's really hard, and I haven't really pr had enough time to practice it properly. So I'm just gonna go back the regular way in a little bit. So we met up with Esburn. He's this cool dude. I tell him that I'm one of the blades, and he's gonna open up the door here. So uh, yeah, we're gonna just uh, wait around with the door a little bit. This will just take a moment. Yeah, yeah. He's got this uh, really annoying door he needs to open because he had to protect himself from, uh, heck, I don't even know, some Thelmer agents or something. Now, in an older route, we actually used to go down and grab uh, some items from a chest for money management. We but we don't are. really need that anymore. Okay, you, talk to me. There is hope. I'm just going to no, skip through all of this dialogue. I'm going to tell him that I'm the Dragonborn. And uh, now, normally, he'd be gathering his stuff, and it'd take a while. Did you need okay. Something? I'm just, basically I'm bumping into him to progress his dialogue. Um, and because of that, he's now following me without having to first gather all of his stuff. Some uh, some annoying Thalmor wizards here. These are kind of a pain sometimes. Now I'm just gonna run out, basically. Just gonna follow the pathway through. There isn't really too much to talk about here. It's a pretty straightforward hallway. They're gonna try to kill me and, and whatnot, but we just run past them. Go away, dude. Okay, he was a little mean. He did quite a bit of damage. He's tr still trying to deal quite a bit of damage. Not quite successful, but, you know, they tried. That's it. Now we're uh, basically out already. And through this door right here. Who's that? Now, we already put this bridge down earlier because I uh, actually switched the lever as I was going there. Dude, dude, go away. There we go. Okay, bit of a bit of a rough, uh, rough rat way, but, you know, we got out of it at least. So now things are going to calm down again. And, uh... We're gonna make our way to Riverwood. Oh, of course. This uh, this can happen sometimes when enemies decide to actually chase me outside. It's really annoying because now I gotta walk a bit through Rift and shake them off before I can fast travel out of here. I think we should be fine from here. Oh, whoops. Uh, oh, what? Or oh, didn't really want to. Come on. There we go. Didn't really want to cooperate there, but that's okay. So, uh, back in Riverwood, we've got a few things we got to do. So, first things first, I'm going to grab another bucket. Because, uh, as you saw earlier, buckets are, uh, are quite overpowered. And we're going to get into the inn. I'm going to wait for a bit. So, uh, Esburn can start his dialogue. And I'm going to skip all of the dialogue here. Now, one thing uh, com that's different from this run compared to a regular run, normally I'd actually have a timer running that doesn't include the loading times, uh, because of which there is also two different timings, basically. There is one with loading times and one without loading times. Uh, without loading times, my PB is about 55 minutes, which is not really all that good, but hey. Okay, I got the quest trigger I needed, so now we can go to Skyhaven Temple. But the Skyhaven Temple is in the neighborhood of, uh, of Markarth, and I haven't actually been to Markarth yet, so we're going to go to yet another major hold. We're going to get to most of the major holds over the course of the run. Uh, here's our uh, our, uh, our good friend Bjorlam, and uh, he's going to get us to Markarth. This, this guy is going to get a lot of money out of us, by the way. He's going to get us all over the world, or all, all over Skyrim at least. Hey, now that we're here, we've uh, we've seen the stables. That's quite enough of that. 
set up sprint glitch again because that did not seem to work quite well. Okay, we're in sprint glitch. Cool. So uh, now that we're here, we're going to make our way to Skyhaven Temple. And there is actually a very, very important thing I need to do along the way, which is actually not important at all, but we're going to do it anyway. I'm going to try to get an egg, which is completely useless. It doesn't do a thing, but memes. Memes are great. It's uh, just, a, just a calm way around here. So there are other ways to do this. Uh, the newer run uses a couple of the glitches that I just haven't learned yet. Because like I said, I actually learned the route from two and a half years ago. Okay, there we go. We got the egg. Uh, I ran this game about two and a half years ago. Uh, I, ran it, I learned it during the first get, uh, 12 hour challenge. There we go. And that was quite a bit of an older route because several glitches, among which horse tipping and uh, uh, some duplication glitch that I'm actually going to attempt later, uh, hadn't been discovered yet. So uh, I learned a different route than what they use nowadays, but this route kind of kind of still works just fine. It's not optimal, but it'll get us through the game pretty quickly nonetheless. I believe with this route, you're ideally getting times of around like 39, 40-ish minutes. I might be off a little bit. Um, with the, the current route, they're more like half an hour. So there should be an entrance around here. I hope I can actually find... I've had some trouble in practice as well actually finding this place. Also, hi, Dragon. Sometimes these rocks can just look too much, so usually when I can't find it, which is quite unfortunate when that happens, I just go back up the mountain, walk back towards the, the trigger, and we should be seeing it in just a little bit. It should be right down here. The card spire, there we go. So this is card spire. We're gonna skip just about everything of it. Because uh, these are some uh, some cool looking enemies that we don't care for, the Forsworn. We're gonna grab another bucket because, like I said, buckets are pretty cool. I'm gonna quick save here because this is actually a pretty pretty tough jump. I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna clip myself onto the ledge over here, get onto this uh, this rock here, and up this ledge over here. Now this is all, of course, not completely intended, but uh, oh crap! That's why I made a quick save earlier. So we're gonna jump onto this juniper tree. Uh, nope, that's not high enough. That might work. No, that's not going to work. Come on. This, uh, jumping mechanics are great sometimes. Sometimes it's kind of, this, especially this tree right here, this juniper tree. It's probably one of the most finicky platforms in the entire run. So I'm going to kind of squiggle my way up here. And there we go. Took a couple tries, but here we are. This is uh, Skyhaven Temple. Just going to wait a bit. And try that again. Okay, this can happen. If that happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to Markarth. Uh, Esburn didn't show yet, and I need Esburn to show up there in order to trigger the next bit of, uh, bit of the story. So we're going to go to Esburn, and then I'm going to back, go back into Skyhaven Temple. And that usually makes Esburn show up here. There we go. Oh, there we go. He tells us how to open up the temple. And, uh, well, in we go. As you can see, by the way, we're still in prisoner garbs, and we are still uh, we still have a dagger, and that's about it. I don't even think we have a dagger, actually. So this is Skyhaven Temple. It's going to tell us a way how we can feed, uh, maybe defeat the dragons, which would be kind of cool. Going to wait here for Esburn to actually move forward a bit. Yeah, yeah, I don't... I don't care. So we're going to pick up our one weapon, which we're going to use throughout this run. I'm going to go over here, wait again. This is a bit of a, an interesting trick. I'm going to get Dragonbane here. I'm going to quick save. And actually, immediately as I did that, I quick saved and then uh, got it to, uh, or picked it up, and then immediately quick saved again in order to hopefully have duplicated the, the Dragonbane. Does it show how they defeated him? Isn't that why? Patient. Come on. Yes, yes. This here coming. Yes. Mind yes. your own. Oh, this. This, uh, this is. Come on. Stop talking, please. This is the for shout, but there's no way to know what shout is. You, you ever heard of such a thing? Okay, so that didn't go ideal, but that's fine. The, the graybeard. 
Think about it. No. Trust me. There is no need um, to be afraid. Think of Tiber's... Have you ever heard of a shout that can knock a dragon out of the sky? I accidentally got the wrong option there. I'll ask Aaron uh, we'll Aaron Gar if he knows. Basically, we need him to tell us whether... Uh, or what he knows about the shout and maybe give us some pointers as to how to get the, the shout to defeat Alduin. So back into Carrotspire because I can't actually qu uh, quick travel from there. And then uh, I'm going to go back to the stables. And ideally, I want this to be nighttime right about now, which it should be. I hope so, at least. Okay, good enough. Go down here. I may need to wait an hour or so. Yeah, okay, I'm going to wait a bit, because that guy is too close. Uh, quick save, because I want to actually get this. We need to steal this horse. Okay, that didn't work, so we're going to quick load. There's basically people watching right now, and I can't be having that. That's not very useful when you're trying to steal a horse if people are watching. Problem is, if I have a bounty, I can't quick travel. Okay, there we go. Now we now we have our horse. And, uh, well, off to... Uh, so Riverwood for probably the most fun walking part in a bit. So uh, Skyrim is known for having some broken mechanics, uh, but one thing it is very broken in is uh, running with or uh, walking with horses. Uh, I need to get into an infinite sprint here with the horse, which is kind of tricky to set up. It's a bit more tricky than the usual one. Nope, that I don't think that did it. I'm being too fast here. Okay, there we go. That should do it. So uh, this is a mountain. This is uh, basically what gets us to the end. And, uh, well, horses, they have got some really good physics uh, uh, on them. They, they, they can, they're apparently really good at scaling mountains. So we're going to attempt that. This is pretty hard to scale this mountain. It's 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 kind of tricky to get up here. But I'm going to try to use this horse in order to uh, get myself up the mountain here. It's uh, it's quite a steep mountain. Uh, I'll show you guys in a little bit how steep we're looking at here. But yeah, as you can see, this is uh, this is our uh, our sweet horse. I don't really have a name for him yet, but uh, this is basically how we're climbing the mountain by just going uh, going all the way up. Basically, what I'm going to try to do is normally you're supposed to, you know, climb the thousand steps or the seven thousand steps or however many it may be in order to get to, uh, you know, the top of the, the, the world, the throat of the world. And, uh, well, they're, they're the, the some, some old guys live in this monastery. And we want to visit them, but I don't want to climb all of those staircases because first getting there would be really slow, and then climbing all of them would be even slower. Uh, and this mount or this uh, this horse can do the trick quite well as well. So this is the final ledge. We're almost there. These are the last few uh, few steps that we need to cross here. Come on, horsey, you can do it. There we go. So up the mountain we've uh, we've gone. There's a few st steps that we still need to kind of cross. Because it's not immediately up from Riverwood, but there it is. That's quite a bit faster than, than, than walking the regular way. Now, there's one major issue, and that's the, the front door is actually locked right now. Because we never triggered that cutscene. So, uh, I need to find another way to get up the mountain. And, uh, well, we have a horse. We've got uh, the great horse physics uh, that you get with climbing horses. So, uh, how about we scale the mountain? Okay, that didn't really work, so I'm just going to use this part here. That should help us get up the mountain here. This might look a slightly glitchy, but this is totally intended. So here we go. Up and down we go. So there we go. That, that, that's it. Now we're at the, uh, at the Greybeards. Uh, we're still kind of sneaking, and sneaking is rather slow, so... Uh, okay, there we go. So I want to find Arangar because he can tell us about uh, about this amazing shout that we need. Sky, where did you learn of that? So we tell him that the blade yeah, helped well, us, but that we're not a pawn of the nothing. blades, and he'll uh, he'll therefore let us know about Indeed, Parthenax, the leader no, of the Greybeards, who lives upon uh, on the top of the mountain. 
Uh, but not perhaps only its creator. Only Patanax, the master. He lives, he speaks to us only. Re only those whose voice is strong can find the path. We will teach you a shout. So he's going to teach us, teach us a shout with which we uh, we can climb the mountain. There is another way, which is by using the horse, but I personally find that second climb really tricky. So we're just going to run up the way that we normally would. Gonna skip most of his dialogue here. Going to give him some time because he's uh, he's rather slow. And we're going to get to learn our first shout. Now, our first shout is not Unrelenting Force, as with ever, uh, every other Skyrim playthrough where you'd normally run the well-known Fusro Da. We're going to learn Clear Sky first. I will grant you my understanding. So they'll teach us about Clear Sky. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna get some big explosions and we're gonna climb the mountain again. Uh, this is not really that hard to climb, even to do it normally, and it doesn't really lose a lot of time. Uh, the problem with uh, with walking up regularly is I just struggle with it more than I'd like. There's a lot of fog which kind of damages me. We needed to get rid of that. These these wisps we don't care for. We're just gonna run right past them. We could get rid of all of this fog, but I'm too lazy to. Uh, wait, this way. The thing is, in my on my own PC, and this is kind of weird. This fog doesn't show for some reason. Just weird graphical glitches, basically. So I can just usually see the path here. So that makes it even easier than it is now. Although, let's be fair, it's a pretty straightforward path. There is one thing to pay attention to, and that's especially near the end. If you're not paying attention and you don't use your shout appropriately, you can die here. I've actually had that happen in my first practice run uh, as I was practicing for this marathon. So this is the last one. And again, on my own PC, this part doesn't show. So in my first practice run, I just ran right into it. That's kind of bad when you do that. So uh, I heard you guys like dragons. Dragons are cool, right? So this is the throat of the world. And uh, well, right over here somewhere. Oh, there he is. That's my good buddy, Parthenax. We're going to talk to him for a bit. We're going to ask him about the dragon, ra uh, dragon rend. And he tells us that we first need to introduce ourselves. So just use this dialogue and he's going to teach his fire breath. And these sound effects are rather loud, by the way. So don't, don't mind that. Okay. Can I learn it, please? Thank you. Hello. There we go. I'm going to wait until a certain trigger appears. There we go. Now I have learned the shout, fire breath. And now he'll actually talk to us. Um, I actually just remembered I kind of forgot something important. This is fine because I still do need to do all of this and it does set the necessary triggers to do so. So I needed the Elder Scrolls, usually pick that up. Um, oh, uh, yes, we're going to go to the stables. I'm going to actually do two triggers that I kind of forgot to do. You're supposed to do that a little bit earlier, but that's fine. Because uh, we're gonna, we've got two really cool things we can actually do. 
Uh, first off, we're going to go to Winterhold. Climb and back, and we'll be off. I can take you to any of the hold capitals. So the first things first, we're going to go to uh, Winterhold, and we're going to do the bi the best jump in the game, the best jump by far. It's great. Uh, because what we're going to do is, you know how Winterhold or like the College of Winterhold is on like this giant cliff somewhere. I'm going to jump right off that cliff. And we're going to survive. Barely, but we're going to survive. This is how we do it. We're going to go over here. I'm going to quickly quick save in case I mess it up. So this cliff, and we're just going to jump. And there we go. There's just enough a big a puddle of water for me to actually survive that. The reason for this is there's actually two things we want to do. Uh, we need to get the uh, lexicon in order to be actually able to enter or to, to get the Elder Scroll itself. Then we're going to get the Elder Scroll itself because that's rather important when you want to use the Elder Scroll. Uh, and then once we have the Elder Scroll, we're going to go back to Parthenax and we're going to trigger uh, basically the end game. Or like the next segment, basically. We're just going to run over to a cave that's somewhere over there in the way in the distance. Let's uh, try to not get off course here. Because of the sprint glitch, by the way, we actually move equally fast in the water as we would in on land. So it doesn't really matter how I maneuver through these ice rocks as long as I don't get stuck anywhere. So this is Septimus' uh, outpost. Septimus is kind of a scrub. He, uh, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go into sneak. And... Uh, Ah, unfortunately, he actually saw us. There we go. Okay, second try. That's still pretty okay. So, uh, yeah, Lex uh, he's the guardian of the lexicon, and normally he'd give me a bunch of quests to fulfill, but we're just going to steal it from him because we can. It's quite a bit faster. And, uh, well, back to uh, the White Run stables, and now we're going go to go to do the longest bit of walking in the entire run. So if you haven't seen enough running in this running simulator yet, yeah, we're going to do a little bit more. Okay, back into the sprint glitch. So this is actually also the part that I kind of struggle with the most when relearning this, because it is a very long distance you need to walk, and if you kind of, if you're off uh, course by like a few degrees, because of that, you're going to be off course by a lot. Basically, where I want to go is Mazark Tower, and not the dungeon that is in, uh, involved around it, because we're going to skip the entire dungeon. It's a pretty, pretty big dungeon, uh, because we're going to clip into Mazark Tower itself and just get the Elder Scroll. However, that does mean that I'm going to have to run all the way north in order to actually even be able to get close to it. That, uh, that involves quite a bit of running. It helps that halfway uh, across the path, there is actually this uh, this outpost by bandits. So if I get close to the outpost, which is that outpost right there, I kind of know that I'm on course at least. We want to hold north and slightly east for our general course. So it's quite a beautiful area, if I do must if I must say so myself. It uh, gets you a nice view of the landscape as we just hold, hold W. Honestly, there's not anything going on. Is this just walking to the right path? Uh, these mountains, I, I can kind of help you in trying to find it uh, because I'm looking for certain cliffs, but especially I'm looking for a certain rock that's going to show up in just a little bit. Slightly too far to the east, I feel. Yeah, there's the rock that I talked that I mentioned. We usually run right past that rock, and that means we're almost at Mazark Tower. And we've got a really cool way to get into Mazark Tower. You'll see. So there it is. That's the tower itself. That's where the exit of the of the Mazark area is. But, you know, why not uh, enter through the back entrance? Because we can. So I'm going to go in here. I can kind of clip myself in here. I'm going to quick save, quick load. Uh, okay, didn't get it first try. That's fine. This is a pretty hard clip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold up. Quick load. The thing is, if you hold it too long, you're gonna clip onto the the, the thing itself, and that's get, gonna get me up there. But I don't want to get up here. I want to get into this bit of the wall. 
Okay, I think I got Okay, I got it. And then there's this really small trigger here to enter Mizark Tower. It's really small, but, you know, that doesn't matter. Because now we're in the tower itself. So there's two things we want to pick up here. First and foremost, there's the Elder Scroll, which is kind of what we came for. But there's actually an equally important thing here. Which is a bucket, but it's a very special bucket. There's only one of them that we can pick up in the run. And it's uh, it's involved in the biggest skip in the entire run. Uh, we call it the YOLO bucket. Uh, you'll see near the end why it's called YOLO bucket. It's my favorite trick in the game, but it's also one of the hardest tricks in the game. That bucket right there. Uh, well, here we get to see the Elder Scroll appear. Get the Elder Scroll and let's head out. Now, since I already got to the Throat of the World earlier, I can just go back there now. I meet up with Parthenax because he needs to tell me how to use the Elder Scroll still. You have it. The Kel. The Elder Scroll. And, uh, well, now we're going to sit back. And uh, we've got about a seven-minute cutscene here that we can't skip. So, uh, yeah, grab a cup of tea and uh, enjoy the cutscene. You guys still enjoying it so far? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, this is uh, some dragon. And uh, these are some warriors of old. We don't care about them. But I honor you. This is, uh, this is, by the way, why the Spanish version is eight seconds faster than the uh, English version. Uh, this cutscene is ten seconds faster in the Spanish version. However, uh, you lose about two seconds on the carriages uh, compared to English, so you get about a net time save of about eight seconds on this part. Um, I, I just, for this specifically, I figured Spanish would be kind of finicky. So we're going to go with English instead. We're seeing them slay dragons. This is pretty cool, hey right? A glorious day, is it not? Have you no thought beyond the flooding of your blade? Uh, I should Why mention, by the way, the newer route uh, actually has a way of moving during this cutscene. Uh, it involves something about marriage and whatnot. I don't know how it works. I don't know how to do it, which is why we're not going for it here, because I had like a week to prepare for this. And that is not a lot of time to practice a run from scratch again, uh, especially considering how long it's been. So I mostly went with the route that I already knew. him well. Yeah, uh, what's there to talk about, really? So, uh, they, 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 they're going to teach me Dragon Rent. That's what this is all about, by the way. Uh, it's a shout that'll land the dragon, which is going to be quite useful. After this cutscene, there's a few interesting things coming up, because after this cutscene, there's several things I need to do. I'm going to go into my menu, and this is all going to go pretty quick, which is why I'm mentioning it now. I'm going to go into my menu. menu. I'm going to uh, favorite six or, uh, four attacks, uh, all, four, three shouts, and my uh, ability, my race ability. Uh, I'm also going to equip two Dragon Banes, assuming I got two. Uh, if I didn't, I'm going to try to get myself a second Dragon Bane, because I still can. So it's pretty hard, but I'm going to try. Um, on top of that, we're going to favorite uh, those four. We're going to put those onto, uh, basically, like, we're going to favorite them in such a way that I can quickly access all of them. We're going to dragon rent the dragon, uh, and then immediately, or no, we're going to, uh, that was a tad loud. We're going to go into, uh, into Berserk, we're going to then dragon rent the dragon, and then we're going to try to kill him. But reminder, I'm level one. I'm level one right now, so that's hard. Yeah, like I said, cool cutscene with a dragon. The 
thing, by the way, is all of these characters are actually like as if they're characters in the game. So they can be on really bad positions sometimes. Mr. Hawk, Mantis, your sacred breath to make this contract hurt. Be gone, world eater. I will the bones than your own. Rebreak your perch on this age and send you out. You are banished. Okay, so we finally got to the end of the cutscene. Uh, we've banished Alduin. Uh, we've yes. learned Dragon Rend, at least I think. And uh, now we can actually go for the first, the first of two fights that we're going to do. We need to kill two enemies in the entire game. This is number one. Okay, so I got two Dragon Banes, that's kind of useful. Uh... Oh, whoops, I want that on six. So this legendary unique weapon that we have here, yeah, it's not really unique anymore. I'm gonna quick save here in case I die. Because I can die on this fight. Uh, this is pretty bad. Oh, there's uh, the other dragon. Gonna force him into this landing immediately again. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Okay, there we go. That was Alduin. That's how you defeat Alduin on level one. So now I need Parthenax to land again. Oh, he's going to be a bad guy and, and circle all the way around again. There we go. So I just need to get the trigger for uh, for uh, actually be, be, being able to talk to the, the Jarl of Whiterun so he can trap a dragon in a bit. Say Helgen got hit by a dragon. So we've never actually entered the keep. So all of the quests that you trigger as soon as you enter this place haven't triggered yet. So I need to get through that first. Nothing. What's the meaning of this interlo Well, it explains why the guard let you rush action. So Come on, you were at the Yar will want to speak to you. Here, was right. What do you say? So now we're going to skip all of his dialogue. We do that by simply quick saving and then immediately quick loading. That triggers the entire uh, that that finishes the entire line of text. Uh, there are a few lines that are unskippable. That'll come up in just a little bit, but right now we're still fine. Yes, my. If you'll excuse, that would be. Here, there is. Come, let's go for. I serve Jarl Ball, my court wizard. We're gonna talk to the court wizard because there is a quest that we were supposed to kind of already done. Uh, something well, about Bleak Falls Barrow and, 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 oh, whoops. Well, I tabbed I out of it to the slightly too fast. So now, need, now we need to get him to trap a dragon in his castle. Uh, we're not good enough to actually persuade him. Now what's this nonsense? I want to... Oh. But he tells us, you know, it's kind of dangerous because of so many, or because of the civil war going on. So uh, we're going to get a peace council set up. 
Now, if you've actually, this is kind of the thing, if you've actually already completed the entire uh, Civil War questline, this is something you wouldn't have to do, but it's faster than completing the quest, uh, Civil War questline, so we're going to have to set up a Peace Council here. And uh, we've got some cool ways of doing that. First of all, I'm going to go into probably the hardest uh, clip in the game. You've got High Rothgar here, and we need to talk to the Greybeards, but the problem is this place is still locked. Like, the front door is kind of locked here. So I'm going to get myself another bucket. Well, we got a bunch of these by now. Quick save, quick load. And uh, I'm going to try to get in here. This, uh, this is the most inconsistent one of them all, but you'll see when we get there. Come on. Come on. Game, you know that walls don't exist, right? There we go. So that's how you get underneath this place. Now we need to get out of here, though. So I'm going to go over here. And this is somewhat finicky as well. Let's try to get up there. There we go. And now we've got to the back entrance. That's how we go in here, despite the fact that, you know, the place is kind of locked. Aldrin? I feared as much. We are not warriors. You misunderstand, Dara. I see. So, uh, we're going to set up that Peace Council. Uh, we need to do that we'll trick again later, way. by the way. Because, uh, well, I mean, we kind of need to get in there once the Peace Council is actually going to start. Uh, so, we're going to start off with the Imperials. We're going to convince them to, uh, to join us on our uh, mission to get rid of some dragons. Uh, in order to do that, there we go, there's the path. Uh, I need to quickly find a guard, because, you know, as you may have noticed earlier, I don't particularly, I'm not particularly fond of guards, so I'm gonna attack him, get another bounty, and that puts me right into the middle of solitude. Off to, uh, the general, uh, see what he has to say. Do you have some reason? Right. One of the prisoners, if I... Hmm. Why don't you... I suspect... Besides, I'm sure I'm you're... I'm telling being... you. his dialogue, and then we can actually David. talk to him about uh, the Peace Council. There's nothing. There now, again, he can't really be convinced, but I'm going to try to tell him, you know, do we might, you might always want to negotiate like from a, force of, uh, yes. for a place of yes, strength. It's not... Okay, that's uh, General Tully is done. That's one half of the of the, the party's done. So now we need to go to uh, to uh, Win or, uh, Winterhold. No, not Winterhold. Uh, that other place. Um, so we're gonna take the carriage again because we haven't actually been here. Windhelm, hey, that's it. Where do you want to go? Windhelm, there we go. Climb and back, and we'll be off. Ever been to Windhelm? Oldest city in Skyrim by some count. And again, we've got uh, a particularly big dislike of guards. Guards are, uh, are, are the kind of people we just, we're just going to not deal with them. So here, here's a guard. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'll pay off my bounty. That puts us right in front of the, the castle again. That's the last of the guard warps, though. So we won't be punching any more guards from here on out. into the Palace of the Kings, and we're going to talk to Ulfric Stormcloak to, uh, well, get the second part of the quest. Now, usually it'd be a lot harder to persuade him, uh, but because all, uh, the other guy is already coming, uh, he doesn't care. He's going to just join us. We're just going to tell him that Tully has already agreed. And what would you have me do? If he's not with us, he's against us. Now, remember that second clip that I mentioned? Yeah, we're going to go for that now. Let's see if the second one will go better than the first one. Uh, off to High Rothgar. Like I said, front door is still locked, so we're going to need a bucket. Uh, I have two more buckets, but sometimes I can still find my old bucket around here. Some There it is. See? This is the bucket we used just now. Uh, I'm going to need to get out a sprint glitch real quick so that I can actually set this up. Quick save, quick load, and here we go. That's not it. Try a little bit. Oh, almost. Almost got it. 
Come on. Like I said, least consistent clip in the entire run. Because we're almost getting in there. But not entirely. This can... this even, even good runners can take a few tries on this. So there we go. Now we're finally in. Just need to get up here one more time. And there we go. That was not terrible, actually. We got in there fairly quickly. You're not invited here. You're so invited. while they're discussed, we're just going to sit down and I'm going to wait for everybody to get here. So, so this is... Uh, men of I should not have agreed to host this council. No. You okay, there we go. So, most of the text here is uh, unskippable. So, we've got a really good way of doing this. You'll see a lot of flickering in the flames here. Uh, that's because I'm quick loading and quick saving through all of this dialogue. On actual in game time, this entire council takes about two minutes. But is beard to think that I would sit down. I'm glad we agree on this. And I just try to get to the fastest option. The first one, I just need to escape out. I'm just going to get rid of the, 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 the dialogue. We'll use a few weights here and there to actually get people to sit down. The will... Are you done talking yet? Lady doesn't like to stop talking. Unlike... You're lucky. This is kind of the, the resident sleeper part of this, part, uh, of this game. It's... Uh, just some cutscenes we need to sit out. Sorry. Now that that I have some. Here we go. The old there's not. Yeah, basically you... Ulfric is being Ulfric and the the empire right is being the empire. Uh, the I one bad so. or one annoying thing uh, about this uh, this entire uh, yeah. council is there's three unlip unskippable lines of text. Jarl Ulfric. General Tull. This council. I ask that you. Who would like to. Yes. We want to. So that's why. Jarl El. Yeah, you'll, you'll usually hear like the first General. one or two words. And then every say everything else we just skip. You hope. I'm sure you Yes, that What would Wait. This is how the Enough. Kinda need to pay attention to Oh wait, that's that's the first unskippable one. Let's be clear. If I would quick save and quick load, he'd just restart the line. Since we're all here, at, hmm, the rift would help to. We suggest that they uh, they take the rift. Now we'll. You disappoint. I can see. I know you. You'll never. Soon enough. Stop. So Esbern is going to talk up a bit. He's going to be annoying. The worst thing about Esbern there is he's going to actually start walking around. Because of which I need to wait for him to get into position for the next line of text. That's what I mean. Can you not put this up? I don't know about the end. I don't know about the end of the so world. this is the second line. This dragon situation has gotten out of hand. If this truce... Now, you know as well... Scores. I'm listening. We want comp... They're gonna ask for compensation here. We're gonna actually agree with them because it saves a few lines of text. So, Dragonborn, well said. 
So now we just agree and, uh, you know, we'll get to the the end of this all. Yal, General, these are the marker, the storm, the storm cloaks. Oh, whoops. That's the second, that's the third and last line here. The storm. You both agreed. The sons of. What about you? I have nothing. General. Thank you. The Empire. After that, I'll. Come on, okay. I hope so, uh, this truce gives you what you need. It won't last. We're gonna get out of here, and uh, we're gonna talk to this guy, Esburn. Because uh, we need to tell him that, or he needs to tell us the shout in order to get a dragon. And I'm cross-referencing by calling the dragon. He's not compared. I think it's very likely. Ah. So time to summon. We're basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna summon Odaving. Say the word, and my man will help you. Speak. Off we go, and let's uh, let's summon ourselves a dragon, so we can uh, we can fly on dragons for just a little bit. Okay, it's still daytime, which is Radiant good. Ideally, you kind of want to have this to be daytime, so you can actually find the uh, the Jarl quite easily. Because I need to talk to the Jarl first. Luckily, he's uh, he's still on his throne, so that makes things really really easy. As I promised, my men, my men know what to do. Make sure you the do your point. I'm putting my stick in your <laughs> Go ahead and call this. Uh, so we're gonna get called Dragon. I'm gonna wait here. Good. I switched to Dragon Rend, which it might not look like, but I just switched to Dragon Rend. Been looking for you. Oh yeah, this is a courier. He usually shows so up somewhere. He's a brave courier. I'll tell. I'll give him that one. There we go. Got him first try. He always grabs that guard first. Now the way we trap him is quite easy. We actually go inside a Dragon's Reach. And we're gonna go back out. And that's it, that's the entire battle. So on to the least, or my personally least consistent trick, one of the hardest tricks, but also by far the coolest trick in the entire run. Uh, but first, we're going to get a cutscene. You can actually skip this. Uh, there's a, like a couple of frames window, and if you fast travel in that, uh, you can skip this entire thing. However, it's a cool cutscene where we ride on a dragon. That's all I'll say. So yeah, uh, on to uh, basically the last areas of the game. We're still in Sprint Glitch, and I'm going to do a trick called YOLO Bucket. Uh, this might take me a few tries to get. I quick save there just to be safe. Position myself right about here. I'm going to drop this special bucket that I mentioned. Ah, I tipped it over. That's, that's annoying. I'm flying the wrong way. Uh, give it maybe one more try. Okay, didn't get it. That's fine. That's fine. Like I said, this might take a few tries.
Yep, I thought so. You need that bucket to be in exactly the right position, facing exactly oh. the right way. And sometimes, like, if you're just off by, like, a step or so, that can get hard. So, yeah, this is YOLO Bucket. The coolest trick in the game. Ah, crap. I was too high. I got it. And then I failed it. I thought I was, uh, I because I needed some room to be able to jump on, because I was still slightly off, but I was close enough. And I thought that would work. Come on. This basically skips an entire dungeon, so it's quite important I actually get this. And I'm trying to go for the somewhat safer position here. But it's still really, really hard. There is another setup I can try if this uh, fails again. Oh, nice, nice shot out of the sky there. Okay, we're gonna try a different setup. There is another way that also works. I'm gonna face over here. And we're gonna drop the bucket. Okay, let's let's step a little bit to the side. The downside is there's that dragon. And if he lands it becomes almost impossible. Okay, come on. This is not what I'd like to kill my run. I'd like to actually uh Can you not shoot me out of the sky, please? That's the wrong way. Try it from here. Come on. Okay, this is getting silly. Usually I get this like within like five tries. And I'm kind of disappointed at myself that I'm not getting it within like way more than that. Because I'm flying, but I'm flying the wrong way. It set myself up that way. Okay, that's looking good. Ah, the dragon. Ah, I need that buck. I need that bucket. I need that bucket. I was almost up there, but if you if you're on the ledge, you can back it up. But I need the bucket in order to do that. I couldn't grab the bucket in time. Okay, let's try it again. At least we're flying now. Really, it's it's down there. What's with this bucket right now? Come on, I'm just trying to fly on a bucket. This isn't rocket science right here. Except maybe it kind of is. Yeah, I dropped both buckets. I figured that I'd go wrong, but that's okay. I'm not high enough up. I'm not getting high enough height here. That's the main issue. Okay, I'm gonna try from this position. I could try this. This is kind of not how I'd like to do it, but this might help. Come on, this is, like I said, I'm usually not this inconsistent at it. I was kind of afraid something like this would happen, but... Doing this in the middle of this fireball doesn't help either. Can I grab it? Did I grab it? I don't think I grabbed it. Did I get it? I didn't get it. So the basic idea is, like, you get through this part, 
You set up the YOLO bucket, we get to the other side of this place, and from there I can immediately get into Sovereign Guard. And at that point, we're basically done. So after this, this part is done, we're literally just about there. Okay, we finally got it. Uh, Jasper, just uh, real quick. Uh, Roach is here. Okay, I need to get into Sprint Glitch. I can probably get that taken care of in a second. Rickled. Ah, fair enough. I was getting a call, so I thought it was him. In that case, I have no idea who just tried to call me. Okay, so now that we're finally in Sovereign Guard, my apologies that took so long with the YOLO pocket. That really should have been a lot easier. Uh, but now we're just going to make our way towards the end. Final boss is uh, coming up in, in just a little bit. I'm going to climb up, uh, climb up this place, because it, just because it makes navigating around a little bit easier. So this is the Hall of Heroes, which is, uh, well, we kind of need to enter in order to help us defeat Alduin. I'm uh, going to get into uh, Fire Breath. What brings you, Wayne? Yo! You fought well. Rick. Rick. It is long since one of the living has entered here. That was not sprint speed. There we go, that's better. Okay, so into the Hall of Heroes. Or Hall of Valor, or whatever it's called. It doesn't really matter. We need to get to team up with these guys. I'm gonna go outside. Inside again. Quick save, quick load. Outside again. And that should... Basically, what I try to do is make them uh, appear a little bit faster uh, for by the end of this, because these guys are kind of slow. And I can't wait in this place, so I actually need to wait until they've arrived. Uh, let's switch into clear sky. So now I need to wait for those guys to show up here. Uh, as soon as they show up, we clear sky three times. Um, and after that, Alduin will appear, and Alduin is the final boss of the game. So we're, uh, we're, uh, time is as soon as Alduin dies. So basically as soon as I deal the final blow on Alduin. So that's one. There is, uh, there's the other two slow pokes. Like I said, they're rather slow here. Yeah, you'll get two more of those in case you might want to turn down, you know, your speakers. But this this part is a little bit loud. So the mist shows up again. Again! So we need to do that one more time, and then we're going to get into the final boss fight. Uh, this is going to go like a half a minute over or something. That's uh, I'm going to go slightly overestimate. That's uh, also just due to my failing at the YOLO bucket. So I'm going to switch into Dragon Rend. I'm going to draw my swords here. 
Uh, quick save real quick in case I miss my uh, my shouts or things go really poorly. Got him. Forcing him to land. Okay, so get ready on time. It's almost there. Okay, get ready. Time. <laughs> One second over. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to quickly wrap it up, and uh, we're going to go into MMX next. So, uh, hope you guys had fun with Skyrim. And, uh, yeah, you'll be uh, seeing me around again tomorrow for Zelda, I believe. So, uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon.